is all timing the beast. He's going to be introducing PT, a uh, tool for uh, tracking package scalp. <clears throat> Hello, good morning. <clears throat> well, um, be with me if my English is not very good. Any time, interrupt me and ask, please. <clears throat> well, this talk is about a, a tool uh, that were developed during the last 12 months um, inside the pair group, but it was then find out that it was useful to other groups <coughs> and individuals. Um, it's based on some needs that are very important for a packaging group, especially a big one. Um, this, you have many packages and you need to know some information about them. You need to know, for example, which of the packages are in need of work. If you have 600, 666 packages, it's difficult to know which one of them <coughs> has a new upstream version or has bugs or whatever. It is important to have all this information in one single place because it, if not, you have to lose a lot of time uh, looking for what are the different problems like the BTS for bugs or the QA pages for the status in the archive and so on. <coughs> and related to that is the fact that having all this information in a visually clear way and uh, that at looking, just looking at the, uh, the screen, you can know s more or less how are the status of your packages. And also, uh, it's important to make the teamwork easier, to allow people to interact, uh, not only by IRC, but also by looking at what they are doing or what is the status of other people's packages. Uh, and for example, what we do a lot, especially when I, I was not a DD, I, I wanted to, to signal the DDs in the group to, that my packages are, were ready to be uploaded. And also something very important that is uh, most of the tools only know about the archive. And when you're working in, in a packaging group, it's very important to also know uh, what is the status in your repository. Because you might be solved many problems there, so you don't want that problem showing up after you fi fix them in the, in the repository. <coughs> This is one of the existing tools. This is a, a really great tool, like the QA pages. It has lots of information, but it's only for one package. So if you have 800 packages or so, you cannot use this to, to know what is the overall status. Another nice tool, uh, the package overview. <coughs> it has lots of information in one single place, but there's no way of um, having an a, a intelligent filter in there so you know which one of your 803 packages are, are in trouble now, or sort them, or classify them, etc. The first tool was an example of good information, but dispersed it in many places the lack of categorization, filtering, sorting, whatever. Um, and the most important problem of those tools are that they don't know anything about your repository. The changes you have been done in the last weeks, for example. And also, all these tools work uh, as with the maintainer email as a grouping key. So if you're in your, in your group, there is different ways of saying that these packages of the, of the team, you won't see them in the, same, in the same report. And also, another problem that was uh, important to me at the time was that even uh, each time I needed to do an upload, I couldn't do an upload, I had to ask for uh, DD to sponsor me. <coughs> so, this tool evolved in, in some key, 
key ideas. Firstly, the, um, the core of the information is the BCS. In this case, it's subversion, but mm, in the future will be other BCS tools. <clears throat> Instead of the email of the maintainer or whatever. Also, it's important to know that on every commit to retrieve the information that was changed and update the reports instantly. So you have real-time information of what every person in your group is doing. It uh, relies on a few conventions, not many, that are based on, on common practice at the per group, at least, that allow it to be more powerful without uh, com uh, making things more complex. <coughs> it also doesn't build reports. It doesn't build uh, ex HTML files or XML or whatever. It just gathers that data, gathers data, and then there are some other scripts that make the reports. There's the, the web page or RCC feed or whatever. <coughs> and also in the, uh, in the initial idea was to make it better than the former code that was there that was a bunch of ad hoc scripts. So making modular and more extensible and especially very important is separate the, the presentation from the logic so other people that doesn't want to know the gory details of all this can make nice web pages. So this is temporarily called, I guess it will stay like this, PET, Package Entropy Tracker. As I said, it started as a few scripts, was rewriting last year. And not only me working on this, also Gregor here and Damian Hope watching us from Europe work a lot on this. This is an example of a running instance uh, from the BOAP team. This, uh, this is the C CGI <coughs> script. Um, you see there is a high density of information there. There is lots of links and stuff that pop up when you hover on them. But the nice thing about this is that in, half, in just one screen, you see all your packages that need a new upstream version, for example, here. This is another example that I like a lot because I, I didn't do anything about this, but they made a, a really nice template without changing one line of code. It's the same code behind this, but it's just a different template. Also, it's not only for packaging groups. I, myself, I use it for my very few packages. This is the example of the Gregor personal repository. Uh, it's quite useful because <coughs> even if you're not um, interacting with other people in, in a packaging group, it's very useful to have a reporting on upstream versions, bugs, uh, status in the archive, etc., all in one place. <coughs> well, something about the, the way of working. There are many sources of, of information here. Uh, as I said before, the idea is to build a database that was that is meant to be used later for reporting. So it gathers information from many different places and it's easy to extend to other places. Firstly, the Debian archive, it downloads the, the source indexes. The SBN as, a, as it now, <coughs> but it's meant to be, to, to be used by any other BCS. The BTS, of course, for retrieving all the bugs. The watch files are used to watch the versions in upstream websites. And also, there are many ways of standing it. <coughs> I, I can think of the popularity contest, the DEHS or S7 build stat, which is one of the, the tools that I really like to be integrate, to integrate with this. About the archive, <coughs> the tool retrieves. Firstly, the most important is know which version the package has on, on the different distributions, source, uh, stable, unstable, testing, experimental. And 
so that it can know where, uh, when a package has been removed from testing or from unstable, or is an experimental. <coughs> and also, it can, it can show you when a package disappeared. Sometimes it happens that you upload a package and it, it takes many hours to know where is the package now, especially after new processing or so. So it keeps track of it and it shows, okay, you have to wait, it's, it's being processed. Don't worry. Uh, also read all the control data from the packages that, uh, that provide good information uh, to see which packages you have in your repository which are not uh, officially maintained by you. Uh, look at the DM upload allowed flag, <coughs> especially important for DMs, and uh, sponsors of DMs. And also very important, map source and binary packages because this is the the um, authoritative source of that information. So you, because in your repository you have source packages and then you have to map bugs which are applied to binary packages and so on. And also read the queues at new and incoming to, to track the, where the packages are. <coughs> Sorry. From subversion, or whatever other repository you can think of. The idea is to retrieve, uh, use it as a repository of files, uh, because the most important thing is to retrieve the Debian directory, all the files include, but also to read the tags, because the tags are used in a special way. That's one of the conventions I will get back later. So firstly, the same information is the archive, reading the Debian slash control file but in the current status. For example, you have adopted a package. In the archive, it's not yours, but you have, been, you have it in your repository. You're working on that, so you need to keep track of it until you upload. Know which are your packages. Um, the, the other way around, uh, you can have something in the archive that is in your name, but you don't have it in your repository, so this is only what is really there because the repository is the, the, the key of this. Also, it detects patches, change logs are read to, to track versions and also to, to track the bugs that are being closed in a, in a commit, etc. Watch files which are used to later retrieve the information from upstream. <coughs> and this, what I said, recently about tags com mm, combined with the distribution using the change log, uh, you can detect which is work on progress. So if anybody commits and the uh, change log displays an unreleased distribution, the program knows that it's not meant to be uploaded now, but it's work in progress, so it, sh it cl classifies it differently. And the tags also, because when you tag, you're, you're saying, I have just upload. That's are the conventions I was talking about. A few conventions that I think are good practices, and it was it was based on what was already done in the per group. Using the change log of a communication form, uh, it's very flexible. It, it's really easy to see it in the in the web page, and everybody has to edit it at, before committing. If you are using the the commit. Which, are, which make it more easy and the change, et cetera. So you put the notes to other people, warnings, et cetera. Use the release tag, uh, not tag, the distribution, <coughs> to, set, to signal if the package is ready or not, and to create a tag on each upload. This only few conventions are all is needed to, to make it work properly. Sorry, my throat is not very good today. Well, from watch files, oh, the obvious question is, is there a new upstream version? But also, from the watch files, you can know if upstream just put a different version and now it went down instead of up. So if also flags that, and uh, also 
uh, tells you when the upstream website is not working, etc. So you can fix your watch file. <coughs> Sorry about the people who doesn't like watch files, but, but this tool considers lack of watch files or problem in watch files an error. Also in the in the code I have I, I needed to write a new scan almost replacement to avoid calling new scan 800 times each hour, which is not very useful. <laughs> and well, for the per group, we also use a small optimization, which is to, to download all the indexes from CPAN, which are the module indexes, author indexes, etc., and avoid going to the web all the, the web all the time. As you have seen in one of the examples, the per group has in the repository over 900 packages now, so there are some bias about for to the per group. But in any case, it's quite stress tested by now. I don't think many many groups have more than 900 packages in their repositories. Well, some visual niceties. Ooh, can be seen from there. You can read it. Mm -hmm. Well, I will have to read for you. <coughs> well, this is the main, the main visible script. This is the CCA. Uh, it's currently running on Alias. Many groups have their own versions. This is the place where the, where the database is write, read. The data is mined and classified. And then it's passed through a template. This is showing the compressed view with the filters here. You can fil filter bugs and have some some options there. And oh, one of these, one each one of these uh, blocks are blocks of packages classifying different things. The first reads <coughs> newer upstream available, newer upstream release available. That should be corrected. Newer upstream release available, but already worked on, is the second category, packages that are ready for a lower upload, packages that are tagged. So somebody said, I have a load, but I'm not in the archive, so something is happening there. Packages that are new and incoming, uh, packages will have version problems, because upstream says that it has an older version of the package or something like that. Package, packages with RC bugs. Packages that are work in progress, which is more or less what what, what doesn't fit anybody uh, everybody else no uh, uh, whatever what doesn't fit in other categories put it there and also packages that the only problem are bugs <coughs> it's important to note that each package only belongs to one category it's just a way of altering the, the work to make it more easy to, to read. But it's also, this this is just uh, 10 lines of code that can be easily changed to to one in everyone needs. <coughs> well, this is the smart view. Uh, it cannot be seen very well from, from far. This is the first block, the newer upstream version available category. You see in, in the in the right that they are all blue uh, blue boxes. The blue box signals that there is a problem in that part of the report, which is upstream. The, the says that upstream has a new version than you. You see that in the middle column, the, the says archive. That's the version, of, the latest version of the archive usually experimental or unstable, uh, but it's flagged when it's experimental. And also the version in your repository. You see there that many packages have two versions. One is inside codes, uh, parentheses. The big one is the latest version you have said that is released. The, light, the latest version that in the change log says that is meant for unstable or stable or whatever, but not unreleased. And the small one is the version that is being worked on, the unreleased version. 
And you see the mouse is hovering on the box column when you hover on any of those links that, are, that have a line behind them. Uh, you have a pop-up when they shows all your bugs and can be or any one of them can be clicked. You see when you go to the version in the repository, you see the last the last person that changed it, changed the change log. The same for the the two versions, the unreleased and the released one. And when you click on the maintainer's name, you see the snippet from the change log with all the text. So that's why I said that changelog can be used as a communication medium because you always need to see what was the last commit saying in there. So it's, it's very useful. It works like that nowadays. You see there, there was an unreleased version, so the fonts are, are quite a little smaller. And that's the other version from the same package that was uploaded on this table. It has also some other niceties, like reloading without reloading the box without reloading all the page and web 2.0 stuff. Well, this is the other interesting parts I wanted to tell you. This is the first one here is the re ready for upload. This was a a, a package <coughs> that was. In the last commit, was uh, the distribution was set to unstable, but there is not a tag in the repository with that version, so the, the tool recognizes that as a, somebody who finished their work and is waiting for an uh, upload. So you're a DD, you have many non-DDs in the group, and you want to help them. You go to this place and say, okay, I will upload this and sponsor this. The next one is a package that is tagged, so Somebody said that it has uploaded, but it's not in the archive. So maybe it's a problem because you forgot to upload, or uh, the package is going through incoming or new or whatever, and the tool hasn't seen it yet. And the next one is the packages that are, are in new and incoming. This example only shows six packages in incoming. <coughs> also, I forgot to mention, the these numbers are the number of packages shown and the, number and the total number of packages. It's very important that this filters a lot. It tries to show you only the packages that need work. Because if, if it sh you were showing 900 packages all the time, it, be, it won't be useful. <coughs> well, this is just an explanation of the assume workflow for all, all the stuff to work as is intended. It's nothing new, it's just what was being used at the per group at the moment. <coughs> you just first do an initial import or a new upstream version gets merged. You put all your source changes in pat different patches, so that's also seen by the tool. Uh, you use unreleased always when you're still working. You commit often so other people know and, and the tool gets updated often too. That's useful also because if you if you put your commit messages on the changelog, the changelog gets really useful information, and other members members can see what are you doing and can help you. It's quite common to put in the in the changelog need help with this, and somebody will see it and just try to help and fix it. When you're done, you just uh, change the distribution to unstable. They've changed, uh, uh, I don't know what it's said in English, and then commit, and never forget to, to, uh, to tag after upload. If you're not a DD, as I said before, you just end on the commit, and somebody will take it after the, hopefully. The components of the stuff. The first component, the, the complicated one, is the retrieval script. It's a big, not a big script, but it's used a lot of models that retrieve different stuff from all the data sources I mentioned before. The archive, the BTS, SBN, and whatnot, and upstream. It runs on each commit in a special mode, which is faster. It only retrieves the information that you change. And if you change something like a watch file, it 
checks the upstream version, but only if you have changed the file. <coughs> All the, running, the long running tasks are done in a cron job. It's the same script, with just, just with a different command line. Knows how to, to manage the data relationship so it doesn't have to reread everything on each run. <coughs> so it only will go to upstream if the watch file changes it or the time has expired. Um, same for change log and bugs and etc. <coughs> Currently, use storable files, which is a, mo a per module, which is quite easy to use as a backend. It should be changed someday in the future. The reporting tools, uh, small scripts, really small scripts, that just take this data on the on the pseudo database that is <coughs> the storable file, which is only a hash stored in, in, in a file. <coughs> the main script, which is the one I shown you before, is the QA report dot CCA. Gregor has written a, a nice RC RS is feed which show you the new packages that need uploads. It's also a command line tool, which is mostly for testing, but it's also handy. That does the same as the CCI, but it's just in text and it's smaller. And there also, uh, a couple of months ago, I was asked, for <coughs> was asked by the CPAN people, CPANs people to do some reports from them because they are very interested in how we work and the tools are, that we are using. Uh, they have put some metrics on CPAN uh, that <coughs> give points to a package, to a um, distribution in CPAN parlance. If the, the package is in Debian, the version is current, there are no bugs and no bug patches in Debian, etc. So that's quite inspiring to be useful even to people outside Debian. And it was quite easy just to, to give a report of that that I was already there. My plans for the future is to to remove the dependency of subversion, make the, the, the component pluggable, and so you can support Git or B CBS or whatever. And also to, to uh, build a, a meta meta repository about that so so you can have many repositories, for example, having a report of the whole archive, by, but based on the, rep, the, the <coughs> BCS repositories. Well, also tidy up at the cover a little because this, the data structures doesn't have any structure at all because they are just hashes which are easy in Perl, but it had, that had to be changed so it's more, um, more manageable because there's so much data in there that you get lost without structure. And also to integrate more sources of information, I, I think that many people will think of creative ways of improving this. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my, I mean, I'm talking too fast, <laughs> as usual. Well, <laughs> um, that's the, the introduction to the tool. Uh, this talk was meant to be, uh, it was meant for presenting the tool to other people that doesn't know about it. I think it's very useful for teams, uh, for individuals. Uh, in our experience, this tool, also the previous tools, did, did a lot of to the um, work of the team. <coughs> you allowed for a very few people, uh, very f very small group of people, to manage this sheer amount of packages, and I think it promotes a good a good way of working. So I want to promote it, but also I would like to m more people to join the development effort and improve it. So, any questions? Um, this looks all very similar to GDPO. Have you thought about um, maybe
doing a joint work and integrating with DDPO or maybe what to, should be changed in DDPO to make it useful for uh, the Perl group? Well, for, for starters, uh, the, the most important thing is that uh, this tracks the current status of the subversion repository, <coughs> not what is in the archive. So that is, that's the most important part, the most important difference to, to the, um, the DDPO. Um, yes, it could be integrated, it would be nice. Uh, and mo most of, many ideas were taken from there. So yes, it could be a good idea to integrate it and allow it to be used for by everybody automatically, yes. Andres. Yes, I, I liked your mental notes about the new OOSCAN and the new uh, watch file format. What could you a little bit more elaborate ah, on this? I forgot about that, yes. Yeah, we talked about right. that <laughs> on the other day. <coughs> yeah, and the, on the buff, when we were with Andreas and some other people, it came up this question about OOSCAN. <coughs> uh, I, I don't know if many people have try to write and use a uh, watch file parser from, from scratch, which is quite, dif quite difficult. Um, but these two use a, a completely separate code. And, and the way I discovered that there were some problems with the, the current use can tool, um, some inconsistencies, and more especially some things that cannot be done easily. So yes, one of my mental <coughs> notes over here. Da, da, da. Yes, uh, yes. I have the idea to, to release it so, some some day when I have the time after DeConf, of course, uh, as a new uh, as a replacement of Uscan, and also to design a, a, a new format, a version four or five of watch files. Yes, to make it completely different and sane, which is re really needed. Anything else? We have plenty of time. <laughs> I, I just speak so fast. Please talk to the Descripts people about um, that, so you don't. Maybe the old use can can just be replaced. I know it's it's a horrible mess of spaghetti code. Uh, sorry again, please. The the old use can is a horrible mess of spaghetti code. So yes. I think the Descripts people would be happy if you wrote a gave them a replacement. Oh, good, good. Yes, it's really spaghetti code. I spend um, days in understanding it. Well, I guess this will be a short talk. Anything else? Hello. Um, how, so um, there's a Perl group bias at the moment. How easy is it to? Um, Put up new instances of this. Uh, this to tool. what? To put up new um, instances of ah, this tool. to install it from scratch. Yes. yes. Well, it's not really hard, but uh, it takes some work. Um, this is not currently in the archive. It's not packaged. It should be at some point. Um, it's the the the, oh, the official version is in the package Perl group repository. Um, you have to put um, in the same server as the uh, as the SBN repository nowadays because uh, it relies on direct access to that for ah, for the commit notifications yes and also for speed you just have to put a hook on the commit and uh, the post commit you have to put a cron job uh, set up the configuration and just a few links in your in your web server. It's not that hard. It takes maybe one hour to set it up completely. Uh, there's all already, I don't have the list here, but there are like 10 installations by now in different groups and personal installations, I don't know how many. But it's not, it's not that hard. It's only a little heavy, I have to say, because all of, all of the information, but uh, for modern machines, it's okay. Pardon? That, uh, as a user, it's fairly easy. As 
being one of the installations, having done one of the installations, it's fairly easy. We have it for the VoIP group. It's nothing to set up. It's like half an hour or less. <coughs> and extremely Great useful. to know. Well, that's it. Any other question? Well, thank you for, for coming and listening.